a struggle for our fire to burn hot for the Lord in this world today. I don't know if I'll get any amens on that. I don't know if I'll get any nods and agreement on that because many of us, we believe that we're perfect and we'll say, yeah, pastor, my heart is on fire for God, but we'll walk out the door and we'll frown at the first person that we see and don't call me a liar today. Now, over the past couple of weeks, whether you have realized it or not, I have focused on how we should be sincere in our hearts. I have focused on how we should live honorably in this world. Yet it seems that no matter how much one is encouraged to live sincerely, it seems that no matter what, how, how many times one is encouraged to live honorably, Mm -hmm. it seems that many of us, we do like this. We shrug our shoulders Mm -hmm. at the mere thought of living honorably and living with sincerity in our hearts. Now, the thought of us shrugging our shoulders at this encouragement, it reminds me of how those in Zechariah's day, they did the same thing when God encouraged them to live better, to do better. In Zechariah's day, the Lord encouraged the people to execute true justice. The Lord, he encouraged those people not to oppress those who were in need. The Lord, he encouraged those people not to plan evil in their hearts. And those things, those words of encouragement from the Lord, they seem very reasonable, don't they? Yeah, in the seventh chapter of the book of Zechariah and the 11th verse, the scripture tells us that the people, they did like this. They, they shrugged their shoulders and they did like this. All right. yeah, yeah. They, they stopped up their ears so that they could not hear the Lord's word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, what would lead people to shrugging their shoulders and closing up their ears from receiving the word of God, this encouraging word from the Lord for them to get right, Mm -hmm. for them to do better. What was it in their hearts Mm -hmm. that would cause them to care less about how they were treating those that were around them? Now, my thoughts on those questions, they led me to the book of the Revelation of Christ. And here in this book of the Revelation of Christ, we'll see where Christ, he had a message for John to record and to share with the seven churches, as we'll see here in the second and in the third chapter of the book of Revelation. The seven churches, they were in separate cities like Ephesus, like Smyrna and Philadelphia. We should also understand that when we take a look at these seven churches here in the second and in the third chapter of the book of Revelation, that these seven churches, they are a representation of the church today. Now, when I say the church today, I'm not talking about the local church. I want you to understand very clearly that when I say the church, that I'm, sta- that I'm talking about the entire congregation of all of those that genuinely, that sincerely believe in Christ, the only begotten Son of God. That is the church. Now, when we look at both of these chapters, we'll see that Jesus, he has compliments for six out of the seven churches. We're going to notice that as well as we take a look here. For example, the church in Smyrna there in the second chapter of the book of Revelation and the eighth and the ninth verse, we'll see that though that church was poor and in poverty, we'll see that the Lord complimented its faith. 
The Lord complimented his faith in enduring persecution and in enduring tribulation. In the 18th and in the 19th verse, we'll see to the church in Thyatira that the Lord complimented their works. The Lord complimented their love. The Lord complimented their service. The Lord also complimented their faith as well. You see, most of these churches, they had their hearts in the right place. The Lord, because they had their hearts in the right place, the Lord was pleased with six of these seven churches. Now, even though their hearts were in the right place, we'll see that the Lord often follow up the compliments that he would share with those six churches with words of encouragement with words of advice for how they could improve. You see, there is always, I want you to understand, there is always room for growth, even in the church. There is always room to improve. There is always room for you to be better. The reason why is because nobody, as I said last week, nobody is perfect. We all have our errors. We all have our flaws. We all have our faults. We all have our blemishes. We all have our weaknesses that can be strengthened. So I will tell you that their hearts was a flame for the Lord. But while their hearts were ignited for God, the encouragement was shared with them to make sure that that flame didn't burn out. The word that came from the Lord was shared with those seven churches to make sure that the flame, if it wasn't out, to make sure that that flame did not go out. And if it did go out, to make sure that that flame would be reignited. So for an example, again, to the church in Ephesus, we'll see there in the second chapter, in the first through the fifth verse, that though the church in Ephesus went about laboring for the Lord, Jesus had advice for this church. Jesus advised them to remember their first love. Jesus advised them to then do the first works, Mm -hmm. which is being done out of love. Mm -hmm. So again, to be clear here for you, This church, I want you to understand that this church, it was laboring for the Lord, but the flaw for this church, the problem with this church is that this church was not laboring out of love. And, And the Lord desired for this church to labor sincerely for him. The Lord desired for this church to labor out of love. So this meant that their flame for God, their fire for God, Mm -hmm. it was not burning as hot as it could have been burning. In another example, there in that same chapter, the second chapter, Mm -hmm. we'll take a look at the 12th and the 13th verse. We'll see the church in Pergamos. We'll see that again, the Lord complimented the faithful for keeping to the faith even though they lived in a very wicked city. A city that was so wicked that, that again, Scripture, Jesus said there that that city was where Satan dwelt. Now, while this compliment showed that their hearts were certainly aflame or was on fire for God, we'll see there that they were advised not to compromise. This church was advised not to compromise as others had done that lived in that city. You see, the Lord desired for their hearts to continue to be on fire for him. The Lord desired for their hearts to to continue to burn hot for him rather than to see it dim, rather than to see that fire go out. So today we should understand that the Lord looks at the collective church the same way. Mm -hmm. The Lord, I want you to understand today, he looks 
at the flame of the church to see whether that flame is still burning hot or whether that flame is growing dim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since we are all individual members of the body of Christ, this thought, it leads me to wondering. It leads me to asking a question. It leads me to asking all of you today whether or not your heart is on fire for God. Is your heart on fire for the Lord or has the flame for God began to go dim in your heart? Now, as you consider that question, you have to ask yourself, how passionate are you for the Lord today? Are you truly living in fellowship with the Lord today? In that question, I would have to ask you, are you diligent in your prayer life today or have you fallen off? Are you diligent in your studies or have you fallen off? Are you, are you truly walking by faith today? When I say that, I'm asking you, are you truly loving the Lord in your hearts? And in that love, are you truly loving your neighbor as you love yourself? Or have you fallen off? As much as many of us would love to say that our hearts are on fire for God today, the harsh truth, the harsh reality is that it is a struggle for our fire to burn hot for the Lord in this world today. I don't know if I'll get any amens on that. I don't know if I'll get any nods and agreement on that because many of us, we believe that we're perfect and we'll say, yeah, pastor, my heart is on fire for God, but we'll walk out the door and we'll frown at the first person that we see and don't call me a liar today. You see, I'm saying it because I know how I am. Many of us, we struggle to live passionately for the Lord today. And that's just the harsh truth. And like I said last week, it's time for us to keep it real. And I'm keeping it real because I can keep it real with myself. You see, we live in a world that is filled with selfishness. And in this world that is filled with selfishness, it causes the hearts of many to grow cold and to grow bitter. And that coldness, that bitterness, it can rub off. It can spread to all of those that are around that cold and that bitter heart. Now, somebody may begin to wonder, well, what kind of effect can it have on us? One being cold, one being bitter, being towards you, it has a great effect on your soul. What it can do to your soul is it can make you be like one who's of the church of Ephesus. Yeah, like the church of Ephesus, many of us, we, we labor for the Lord, but we ain't laboring out of love. We, we labor for the Lord, but we begin to labor out of the bitterness, the same coldness that is shown to us. So from the bitterness of the world, some of us, we have begun to become cold and bitter in our hearts. I ask you today, have you become cold? Have you become bitter in your labor for the Lord? I hope that you seriously give consideration to that question today. If we don't become cold in our heart, there is something else that is happening in our heart today. Let me ask this, you know, if you if you don't enjoy cold weather, if you step out the door and it's below freezing outside and you don't enjoy the cold weather, what are you going to do? You're going to put a coat on, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to do something to be able to live in the world. You're going to, you know, you're going to put that coat on so that you can be warm. You don't want to freeze, right? Mm -hmm. Well, like the church of Pergamos, 
Many of us living in this cold and in this bitter world, we begin to compromise in our hearts. We begin to compromise in our hearts in order to stay warm, yeah, yeah. to be well loved, mm. to be accepted by this world. Mm -hmm. This world that is a world of sin, many of us of the church today, we have began to compromise in our hearts so that the sinner can accept us. All right, all right. So that the sinner can love us. I tell you today, compromising in your heart, compromising to sin today, and accepting sin today is like pouring water on a fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As Paul said in his letter to the church in Rome, we are encouraged not to be conformed to this world. We are encouraged to be transformed in our hearts by the renewing, by the work of the Holy Spirit. The renewing of our mind is done through the works of the Holy Spirit. See, I tell you today that we can't pour water on our flame. If you're compromising in your heart today, it's time for you to stop compromising in your heart to sin. Just as the Lord desired for the seven churches in the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, he desires for the collective church today. The Lord, he doesn't want our fire. The Lord doesn't want the fire for him to go out in the church today. He wants that fire to burn. He wants it to burn hot. He wants it to burn bright. Will you burn for the Lord today in your heart? Will you burn hot for God today? Now, with that in mind, I want to take a look at the church of Sardis. They're in the third chapter, and I especially want to take a look at the Church of the Laodiceans there in the third chapter as well. There in the first verse, we'll see to the church of Sardis. Again, Jesus, he had a compliment for this church. He compliments that it had a name. Yeah, yeah. However, within the same breath there, you'll see that Jesus said of this church, he said that though his name was alive, that church, it was dead. Now, think about this for a moment. For that church to have a name but be dead, it speaks a whole lot of the church today. You see, the name of Christianity, it's alive and well. But the church is starting to die. All right. yeah, yeah. Now, for that church to have a name, but it to be dead, again, it speaks a lot of Christianity as a religion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than Christianity as faith. I hope you're following along with me today. Now, some of you may not be following along with me yet. You may be wondering, well, pastor, what do you what do you mean by that? What do you mean that Christianity as a religion is alive? But again, Christianity as a faith is dead. What do you what do you mean by that, pastor? Well, as I have said in the past, I'll say again to you today, the Lord doesn't desire religion. The Lord, he desires true and sincere faith in our hearts today. Mm -hmm. See, a heart of religion, it has a flame. The flame is there, but that flame, it is so dim that it can barely be seen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whereas the sincere heart of faith, it don't have a flame. Mm -hmm. It has a fire. And I tell you today that that fire, it burns incredibly hot in the heart of one who is of sincere, 
one who is of true and genuine faith. All right. Come on. Now, my thought about the sincere heart of faith, it goes back to what Paul said in his letter to the church in Rome again. You see, our spirit, it has been quickened. It has been revived and made alive through Christ, through our faith in Christ. Not in our religion, but through our faith in Christ, our heart, our heart being our soul has been made alive, not dead. It has been made alive by Christ. God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, it again, it only dwells in the hearts of those that are of genuine faith, those that genuinely believe. And again, through that faith, the Holy Spirit, it transforms us. It is always adding wood to the fire so that our fire does not go out. Because again, we are of sincere faith. Keep that in mind today. On the other hand, there are many today that go out to church each and every Sunday because it's routine for them to do so. They go to church each and every Sunday, but their heart isn't in the worship service. They're just about it. They're in the pew or in the seat. You see, many go through the routine of prayer. Many go through the routine of reading scripture, but their heart isn't in it. It's just another routine. It does nothing for their soul. And because their soul isn't truly in it, they can't be uplifted. Their fire is just dim. But if your soul was really in it, if you, in other words, as we would say, was all about it, then that scripture, that prayer, it would do something for your soul. It would uplift that soul. That flame would become a fire. You see, if you was all about it, if your soul was really in it, going out to church and worshiping each and every Sunday or when you could, it would do something to reignite that flame and keep that fire burning hot. Your soul must be in it today. Is your soul really in it today? You see, Christianity in name, it is very well known. But I ask the question today, where is the fire for God? Where is the passion for the Lord today? We must understand that God, he calls on his church to lead souls to him. But if the flame is dim, how can the church lead souls to God? You see, if the flame is dim, the church can't even lead itself out of the dark. That fire need to be bright. In other words, that fire need to burn hot for the church to lead itself out of the dark. You see, our hearts, it must be on fire for God in order for us to lead ourselves and for us to lead anybody else who may be in the dark. So to this church, Jesus advised them there in the third chapter, he advised them to strengthen what was dying. If your faith was once sincere, if it has turned into religion, Jesus said, I have something for you to do. Jesus His advice to this church was for them to remember. Mm -hmm. Remember him. He said his advice to this church, he said, was to repent. Remember, repent. And then we'll see there that Jesus, he said to this church, he said for them to hold fast. Remember, repent and hold fast, Mm -hmm. he said to the church of religion. Mm -hmm. Those of religion today should remember when they first believed. Mm -hmm. Those who are of religion today, 
they should remember that joy that they had of salvation when they first came to the Lord and believed. Rather than going through the motions, the Lord calls on them to remember when you first came to me so that you can move about with that joy of salvation that you once had from me. Do you remember when you first believed today? See, when you remember that joy, remember the joy of salvation that that you had when you first believed, if that flame of yours, if it has started to dim, I tell you today that it will reignite. If, if your heart has started to go dim, if you feel that you're starting to lose passion for the Lord, remember, repent, and then when you have that joy of salvation again, hold fast to it. And it will reignite your heart. Your heart again will be on fire for the Lord. Now, when we look later here in this third chapter of the book of Revelation, we come across the church of the Laodiceans. All right. Now, this church was something else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If y'all thought that the church of Sardis was a representation of the church today, oh, wait till you get to this church here of the Laodiceans. Right. You see, this church, Jesus had no compliments for if you take a look at the scripture there. When we get down there to the 15th verse of the third chapter of the book of Revelation, we'll see there in my key verse for today that Christ said to this church that this church, it was neither cold or hot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You see that Jesus said that this church, he said that it was lukewarm. In other words, this church, it was suffering from a complacent heart. Mm -hmm. Well, it's flame. I want you to understand it wasn't burning hot. It wasn't dim to burn a bit cooler. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that this church had no fire at all. All The flame was out. And if there was no flame, there certainly was no fire. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on. It was just there. This church was just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is the church just there today? Are we as a church, the entire congregation, of all of those that sincerely and genuinely believe in the Lord today, are we just here? Uh, Sitting on our hands, doing nothing. No flame, no fire, no nothing. Uh, The church today suffers from religion, Uh, and sadly, the collective church today also suffers a great deal from complacency. The church has become complacent. Like I said last week, it's time for us to keep it real. Let's keep it real here today. The church has become complacent and we begin to wonder where everybody at. Well, what have we done for everybody to be here? Frankly, the church has become so complacent that it has become apathetic. We have become apathetic in our hearts today. You see, to be apathetic is to lack feeling. It is to lack emotion. It is a lack of concern. It is a lack of interest. The apathetic heart, it is often in a whatever Good old shrug of the shoulders again. It is often in a whatever type of mindset. It could not care less. It couldn't care less about anything that is going on. That's just how complacent the apathetic heart is. Think about that for a moment. 
for the church to be so uncaring, for the church to lack interest or mm-hmm. concern about anything that may be going on, but especially when it comes to helping, when it comes to loving, when it comes to uplifting, for the church to have no interest in doing that, I would say that there's a major problem. I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that. But for the church to be that way, man, that's uh, that's something wrong. There's a, a major flaw, a major problem, a major blemish that needs to be corrected. But yeah, I could be wrong on that. Maybe everything is all right. And, and, and maybe past is just, just, you know, jumping the gun, as they would say. You see, for the church to to be this way, it stands against the great command that came Mm -hmm. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, what was his great command? Well, his great command is for the church, for those who say that they believe, Mm -hmm. for them to love him. And in that love, again, we're supposed to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Yep, pastor did it again. Maybe I need to put a counter on the wall just to see how many times I say that. Because it's a big issue in our world today when the church is shrugging its shoulders at the great command that came from God. When we're shrugging our shoulders at the idea of loving him by loving all of those that are around us. If we're shrugging our shoulders at that, there's a major problem going on. Something that I have come to realize is the fact that the world it is training more and more people to be apathetic to be uncaring in their hearts. And in this way, it is flooding, not making this way. It is flooding. It is pouring into the church today. As Paul had said, this is all the results of Satan's warfare. Wickedness, even being in the heavenly places is what Paul said. You see, to me, this is very concerning when we consider how the bitterness and how the cold hearts are growing and spreading more and more in our world today. Where is the fire for those hearts today? The true believer, we should stand for what is just. We should stand for what is just on behalf of all people, but especially those who are in need. That is what we as believers, that is what we as a church That is what we have been commanded to do. See, true believers are to be lights in the world. But there is no light in the apathetic soul, in the apathetic heart. When we are apathetic towards others, we must understand that we're also being apathetic towards Christ. So those who refuse to help others during the days of the great tribulation that will come, In the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel, Christ tells us Mm -hmm. that he will separate the sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. And the goats will be those who are so apathetic and uncaring about those that will live in that day. The judgment that will come for them awaits all of us who are in the world today. Mm -hmm. Will you be a sheep or will you be a goat today? Again, Jesus, he said that he wishes for one to either be cold or hot because he could do something for them. He could reignite that flame and he can keep that fire going. But the lukewarm church, we will notice that in this scripture here in the third chapter of Revelation, that the lukewarm church will be vomited out of his mouth. Because it's lukewarm, it has a a bad taste. The church, it should taste sweet. The church, it should taste good. It shouldn't be vomit inducing. I don't know if you hear me here today. God, we must understand that he wants his church to be there to help others out of love. Out of out of sincere love rather than be uninterested. 
God wants us to sincerely help others rather than merely going through the motions of religion. He wants your heart to be in it today. As we was talking about in the Sunday school lesson today, the Lord desires for the church to be cheerful in his giving. So the question that I believe that we should be asking, the question I believe that we should be answering today is how does one say that they believe in the Lord, but then become lukewarm in their heart? How can you say that you, you love the Lord, but then again, you are apathetic in your heart. What is going on in your heart? How does the fire of God in the heart of the believer simply go out? With the church of Ephesus, we could see the flame was starting to flicker, that the flame was starting to struggle as they were laboring without sincere love. I suppose that's the starting place for the church today. We need to make a correction. With the church of Thyatira, we could see that the flame was again in trouble because its members were under the threat of being seduced by false doctrine. Again, that's a major problem for the church today. Not heeding the word of God, listening to the word of everybody else. I suppose that's a place where we can again start and begin to make corrections. And then here we go. The church of the Laodiceans where the flame was completely out. Jesus tells us why they were so lukewarm. They were lukewarm because they were given over to their wealth. They was so well off that they said that they didn't have a need for anything. They said, I got it. They said, I got the world riches. I don't need nobody, not even God. Uh Uh-oh. How many of us are starting to get to that place? So what we say, I got it. What I need to pray to God for anymore. How many of us are starting to get to that place? See, so to be clear here, both those churches, they were, were starting to again feel the influence of the world. Again, the world was moving. And instead of standing out in the world, They was trying to get like the world. Is the church trying to get like the world today? See, quite frankly, all the symptoms of those churches, they are present today in the church. As I mentioned a few months ago, these symptoms, again, they are the results of Satan's spiritual warfare against us and against the Lord. For me, I tell you today that it has been troubling to see the flame of the church grow dimmer and dimmer. I don't know how you all feel about it, but it has been very troubling for me to see where the church is today compared to when I was a little boy. When there seemed to be for me, I don't know if it was real, but just me, I was little. It seemed like there was a passion that burned in the church. There was a fire for God that just ain't there today. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, but it just don't seem like the fire is there. And I want the fire to be there. I don't know about you, but I want the church to get back to where it was. I tell you, it is incredibly troubling today to see hearts going colder and colder and bitter and bitter within the church. See, I I know where the world is, but I know where the church shouldn't be. See, it is troubling to see our hearts being swept away by false doctrine. I tell you today that it is incredibly troubling to see the church to begin not to care. It is incredibly troubling to see the church Losing love, seeing the church lose its joy of salvation. I tell you today that it's on me as well. As the pastor, it's on me as well. Because I, like you, 
I am part of the body of Christ. I am a member of his body. And so with that in mind, this must change. I must change. I must do better. You must do better. We collectively as a church today, we must do better. Our hearts, they need to be reignited for the Lord. And again, I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about myself as well. Again, nobody is perfect. There is always room for growth. There is always room for improvement. So how do we reignite our hearts? How do we reignite our hearts so that they are set on fire for the Lord? Well, Jesus, he said to the church of the Laodiceans there in the 18th verse. He said, I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire, purified, in other words, that you may be rich. Jesus is gold. I want you to understand ain't gold of this world. I hope you all understand that. Jesus, there in the 19th verse. He did advise the Laodiceans, just as he advised the church of Ephesus, to be zealous, to repent. In other words, to remember the Lord. The church today must remember God. Will you remember God today? You see, the church today, we need to remember when we first believed. We need to remember how genuine our love was for the Lord back then. We need to remember it today. We need to get back to that place in our hearts. Will you get back to that place in your heart today? See, the world has worked and worked and worked and tried to strip away our love of God and the joy of our salvation. And it has worked on some of us. So we must be willing to fight to lay hold of and to keep that love and that joy of salvation. You and I, we must be willing to fight to reignite our hearts so that they remain on fire for the Lord. See, some of us, we are afraid to let our hearts be on fire for God because we don't want to cause a stir. We don't want to cause any trouble. We want to sit back. We want to stay quiet. We want to be shut up. But let me ask all you these questions. Do you think Jesus cared about trouble causing a stir when he went into the temple and when he turned over those tables in the temple? I don't think that Jesus feared any, anything. I don't think he feared causing a stir of trouble when he did that. In this sermon on the mountain, Jesus said to the disciples, you are the salt of the earth. As the salt of the earth, Jesus, he told the disciples not to lose their flavor. The church, we need to stop losing our flavor. It's time for the church to, again, be salted for the Lord today. Let me keep it real with all of you again. It bothers me with how watered down we have become in our hearts today how we have lost our flavor for the Lord. You see, I see a church that has lost its flavor, trying to appease and please the masses rather than a church moving to please the Lord. And again, I tell you, it bothers me how many of us will sit by quietly with no care in the world for what others may be going through. It bothers me how we stand by and sit by as the devil, as he continues to work in our world today. I don't know if you all remember this parable, the wheat and the tares, but we have gotten like those who fell asleep and was asleep as the devil was sowing seed in the owner of the fields field. We cannot sit by quietly as this world becomes more bitter, as this world becomes colder. The Lord there in the third chapter of the book of Revelation called for zeal. He called for us to be zealous. He called for us to burn hot for him. And I tell you today that we should certainly be doing that. You and I, we must not be a member of the Laodicean church. 
This means that we must do a health check today on our soul. We must check his flame. And if that flame has started to dim, it's time for us to do again, to remember, to repent, and to lay hold and hold fast the Lord so that our fire, so that it burns hot today. We must again understand that the Lord's command, that great command, that it is worthy for us to burn hot for. It is worthy for us to love him and to love all of those that are around us. We should never be ashamed of God. We should never be ashamed to let our fire burn hot for him. When our soul is on fire for God, we will be a light. We will be a beacon of hope in this world that continues to be dark. That is what we must do today. This is what God desires for us, for our heart to be on fire for him. Will your heart be on fire for him today? Amen. 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 Amen.